This classic whistle-stop presentation is brought to you by OutWest. Love the West? So do we. Click the icon or go to scvoutwest.com. Here's a general view of our outdoor railroad, three-foot gauge, here in San Gabriel, California. The station you see is a replica of a Pottsville branch station on the old Lehigh Valley, which we copied out of one of the old books. It's full size and it's our museum. It's filled with railroadiana, everything you ever heard about the railroad, books, library, everything. I'm sitting now in the inside of the Grizzly Flat Station in front of an old Southern Pacific desk from the Santa Margarita Station. I'm not sitting inside of that little scale model. Anyway, this old station that we put up, copying the Pottsville branch, uh, is filled with railroadiana, that's what they call it. All kinds of stuff. I even have my 1920s type operator's telephone right here. We have telegraph instruments, uh, the roll top ticket dispenser up there is from the old Virginia City Station on the Virginia Truckee. The clock was out of the station in Colorado. And uh, the whole place is filled with uh, interesting railroad items I think you'll enjoy inspecting. Our pride and joy, uh, as far as the collection is concerned, is this old railroad map of the United States. 1866, and you can see the railroads only went as far as the Mississippi and hardly beyond. This was before they finished the transcontinental. We have various locomotive plants here. This large one is a very old pre-Civil War Breeze and Needham Company lithograph of one of their manufactured products. Just below it is a three-quarter scale model built 1890 by a master mechanic on the Baltimore and Ohio, and it's a steamer. Down below, we find old hats, um, conductor's outfits, old-time lanterns, um, baggage tags, switch keys, you name it, it's there. Even a lot of Confederate money and um, uh, original gold spike that we had when we finished our railroad. Uh, Advertising, it's all there. One of the interesting items here in our depot museum is the lithograph inside of this old timetable, which we've spread out in frame. And it shows a cutaway of how people sit in the Hannibal and St. Joseph Railroad reclining chair car. And it features in some of its ad advertising up there by the headlight the new electric light, because up until that time, they burned kerosene or coal oil for illumination. Here's a little picture of me we took inside the depot here back in 1950. Would you believe 34 years ago, I'm sitting over there at the operator's table, looking very official. Here's a reproduction of a painting that now hangs in the Sacramento Railroad Museum to the driving of the golden spike. And down below is a very rare item here in the depot, a genuine Union Pacific target stub switch stand. You can see the UPRR on it, and the date, 1869, just when they drove the golden spike. We ask Ward if he continues to collect toy trains. I keep my eyes open, I go to our trade club meets, everybody has tables where they're swapping and selling things, and occasionally I'll see something, but I've sort of curtailed my uh, uh, collecting, because after all, I fill these two big rooms up, that's about 60 feet by 25, and I think that's enough toy trains, but I'm always on the lookout for some new rare item, that, and I'm always being surprised about something that was made historical, historically that I've never seen before. The Toy Train Museum, in two rooms, displays the colorful history of toy trains. Some of these antique railroad toys are over 100 years old. From the early floor trains of the 1870s, 
to the jumbo standard gauge models of the 1930s. One complete room is devoted to the antique toy trains of U.S. manufacture, and in the other room, a display of early European models. Both displays have operating layouts with tracks of all gauges, complemented by miniature signals, buildings, and accessories. The Honeymoon Express was a window motion display that was rented primarily to jewelry stores. It was designed and built by the previous Behringer Studios of South Pasadena, California. This room here houses my collection of uh, American toy trains. The whole history from 1870 when toy trains first began to emerge right up to 1940, which was supposed to be the golden age when they had their huge locomotives and the big Lionel state cars. Everything in this room represents a toy approach to railroading. Even on things that look like they're on a scale, they really aren't. These are not models as uh, 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 scale development. These are toys, all of them. And uh, I have this layout, uh, this layout table right in the middle of the room, and I can run five different gauges, uh, all the way from an early Lionel thing in 1901 to standard gauge, O gauge, one gauge. And I can take things off the shelf when I get bored with seeing the same trains run. And a lot of people ask me, uh, well, uh, how often do you play with them? I said, well, when I get the urge, it's like a lot of things, balling or sex, you know, I play with toy trains. So I come out here sometimes by myself. Then I have friends who call me up and say, hey, Ward, this, uh, I don't have anything to do tonight. Can I come over and we run some trains? And I said, sure. So we sit here kind of some sort of euphoria and watch all these things running, maybe with the lights off so you just see the little um, lamps burning and the lights in the cars. It's a lot of fun. Now this uh, wall over here represents the golden age of, of toy trains, the big standard gauge. And on this uh, particular display, we divide it between American Flyer and Lionel. This is when trains were so big that not, and during the Depression, you not only had to be rich, but you had to have a big house because uh, it's not like the little N-gauge trains they have today and uh, the Z-gauge that are really small. These were huge things. The earliest trains, of course, were uh, the floor trains, and that's represented by this uh, wall here. Ward gave us a brief history of toy trains in the United States and around the world. You see, kids when they play with trains, they don't really have to have realistic looking uh, trains. Uh, they started out with blocks lots of times and just pushed these blocks along the floor. Here's a complete train with locomotive, tender, and fastener trains. Now the oldest, one of the oldest trains I have was made by the Stevens Brown Company, and it's called Excelsior. Now, I just love those proportions. Here again, it, you wound it up and it just ran on the floor. I think that's the most wonderful thing. I put the old photograph in there to give it the flavor of the period, which was just right after the Civil War when all the factories cranked up to make industrial gadgets, cooking ware, and so forth. Now, other trains were made out of wood. Here's one called Mother Goose. And it's an interesting locomotive because it's lithograph paper glued on to wood. And this is very popular. And these are very collectible now because of the high mortality rate. Kids leave them out in the rain and goodbye locomotive. This is a Jack and Jill made by the Reed Company way back in the 70s. Um, here's an interesting locomotive. 
This is a wind-up that you ran on the floor made by Altdorf Bergman. Here again, you have the fanciful proportions, actually things that look like about 1840, and this is the early 1880s. Toys were more or less simplified, and that's why they look like the older models of trains. They made them in tin, cast iron. Uh, this is a Jerome Secor with the wind-up motor in it, the first person to patent the use of cast iron. You wound this one up. This one just below it is a knife. You merely pulled it across the floor. And uh, here's one that's the boiler's made out of wood with cast iron fittings. Very interesting. You can see the wind-up motor in here. It has a little brakeman that, uh, in each car. I put a few uh, cowboys and Indians here. Here's another train in the back made out of blocks. And kids could, maybe at an early age, could push these along the, the floor. Psh, 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 make all the sounds. I used to do it myself. I'd take some of my early trains and just push them along the floor and make steam sounds, air pump sounds. Um, here's an interesting train called Hercules. This is made by a modern toy company. It's been in the business a long time. Milton Bradley Company. And they, of course, make computer games now and all the latest things. But this is one of their toys from the 1880s. And this is a cut of the toy which they used to run in the catalog. I first saw this toy in an old reproduction of the catalog. I said, I've got to find that. And I finally did. Um, Here's one called General Grant. It's another wooden paper. You can see the general in the cab here looking out. I love it the way he's sitting there in the proportions. Again, the use of lithograph paper glued on wood, and you merely pulled it along the floor. Um, here's another very fine wood paper on wood. I love the proportions of the engineer. Look how big he looks in the cab. Uh, being an artist myself and, and working in animated films for years, I appreciate the very quaint proportions of these railroad toys. Here's an interesting toy. It has a very appropriate name called America. It, it's a puffer. Actually, smoke comes out like the later day Lionel's. Now, underneath, you see the front wheels pump a bellows as they roll with a little crank on it. And Father Cigar would be placed inside of the stack, and as the thing, America, rolled along the floor, you'd see cigar smoke pumping out the top. That's very nice. Here's a very early toy, almost made by like simplified blocks where the paper is glued on. All the detail is in the paper. But the shapes are very simple. You see, here's the Pacific locomotive, made right after the Transcontinental was finished. And the man is loading the wood. And even on the top view, you see his top view. I love the cars, because every, every it seems that many of the early toys had moralistic slogans on them, like this is the grand excursion train to the Rocky Mountains in California. This is the car in which good little boys and girls may ride. I love that. Very, it's almost like the modern day creative playthings, but made way back in the 70s. This is a very quaint train from the turn of the century. It's called Around the World Railroad, the American stock car. It's a sort of a zoo train. And inside are all of these wonderful little blocks uh, that the kids could line up, the different animals. Here are the animals sitting in the windows of the cars, all sizes, doesn't make any difference, camels, reindeer. What I love is this giraffe, and you know how big they are. Here he is, barely sitting the same height as all the rest of the animals. <laughs> this is an early train made by fowls, and it has cars with it. And uh, we know the date on it because actually underneath, uh, indented in the base of the car. It says February 27th, 1883. So there's no doubt about the age of that train.
Don't go away, there's another part to this presentation brought to you by OutWest. Shop, look, and listen right here at WhistleStopUSATV.com.